वेलकम एवरी वन आई एम तनुश्री दलाल फ्रॉम सिविल इंजीनियरिंग ब्रांच एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस ए न्यू मेडिकल रिगार्डिंग सिंपली सपोर्टेड बीम एंड हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द सीयर फोर्स एंड बेंडिंग मूवमेंट ऑफ द बीम सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिराइव the derivation regarding simply supported beam subjected to point loads and also udl on all over the span so let's get started so today we will solve a numerical based on the simply supported beam so here is your question so the question is a simply supported beam is subjected to a combination of loads as shown in the figure sketch the shear force and bending moment diagrams and find the position and magnitude of maximum bending moment so here is your diagram so you can see this is your diagram ab which is a beam which is simply supported over two reactions at point a and at point b and on the beam two point loads are there so first point load is 4 kN which is in a distance of 2 m from support a and another point load is 8 kN which is placed in a distance of 1 m from the support b and third one is your udl which is 2 kN per m which is placed in a distance of 2 m the total distance of the udl portion is 4 meter which is placed at a distance of 3 meter from the support a so now we calculate the shear force reactions and bending moment of this beam so as we know that to calculate the reactions value we need to give a reaction at point a which is ra and reaction at point b which is rb so we need to put the beam in a equilibrium condition so first of all the total upward forces that is ra and rb the sum of these two is equal to total downward forces that is two point loads and one udl so what is the value so ra plus rb is equal to point load 4 another point load is 8 and here is your udl so i told you whenever you need to sum this udl into some point loads then you have to convert this udl into point load so to convert the udl into point load we need to multiply the udl load into the total distance on which the udl is acting so here is the distance of the udl is 4 meter so by calculating 2 into 4 the udl is convert to point load so the point load is 2 into 4 which is 8 kN so the total downward forces are 4 plus 8 plus 8 so here the total ra plus rb is equal to 20 kN then to find out the ra and rb value we need to take the moment 
at about any end of the simply supported beam. So here we are taking the moment about A. Hence, we need to see the right side of this point A and consider what are the loads are there. So you can see here one reaction is there which is RB. Second one is here one point load is there which is 8 kN. Third one is here is UDL is there which is 2 kN per meter. And fourth one is another point load which is 4 kN. So by multiplying the load into distance up to this point A, we can get the value of RB here. So now, first of all, start with here, that is RB, it is the force and the distance from the B to A is here 2 and here 1, here 4, again here 2 and here 1. That means the total span of the beam. So here the total span of the beam is 10 meter. Hence the moment formula will be load into distance. That is Rb into 10. And the sign will be positive because this Rb give a sagging moment towards the point A. After that, consider this point load, which is 8 kN. So it is the load. And now, we will see how much distance it will cover to reach at the point A. So from this point F to A, the distance will be 9 meter. Hence, the moment will be 8 into 9 and sign will be negative because this point load give a hogging moment towards the point A. So here is your 8 into 9. Again after that the UDL is there. So first of all the 2 into 4 is your UDL load. After that, the CG distance of the UDL is distance by 2, which is 4 by 2. Then, rest of this distance will be 3. So, 2 by 2 plus 3. So, the total moment calculation for this UDL is 2 into 4 into 2 by 2 plus 3. So 2 by 2 plus 3 is your 5. So that the total calculation of this UDL is 2 into 4 into 5. And the sign of the UDL will be negative because this load give a hogging moment towards the point A. After that, the last point load which is 4 kN. So for this loading system, the distance it will cover 2 meter. So the moment calculation will be 4 into 2. So as a whole, we can calculate the RB value from this equation. Hence, we get the value of Rb as 12 kN. So, we know that Ra plus Rb is 20 kN. And Rb value we get 12 kN. So, now we can easily calculate the Ra value which is 12 we can deduct from 20. So 20 minus 12 is 8 kN. So in this way, we can calculate the reaction at A, 
which is 8 kN and reaction at B which is 12 kN. So now we have to calculate the shear force value of the beam at point A, B, C, D, E and F. So first of all, for the AC span, the shear force at point A will be the reaction at point A. We know these things from the derivation part. So RA value we got as 8 kN. Hence, the shear force at point A is equal to 8 kN. After that, this 8 kN will be continued towards the point C, that means here. After that, for the span CD, the shear force at point C will be 8 minus 4. So 4 due to the point load acting at the point C. So we have to deduct this point from the shear force acting at the C for the span AC. So 8 minus 4, it will give the value 4 kN. So for CD, the shear force at point C will be 4 kN. Then after that, at point D, the shear force value will be continuing from the C to D because in between C and D, no loading condition is there. So we can say the value of shear force at point C will be equal to the value of shear force at point D that is 4 kN. After that come to the span DE which is a case of UDL. So first of all shear force at point D will be 4 kN. Then at point E we have to consider the UDL part on the span DE. So at point D the shear force value we got as 4 kN. And then we have to deduct this UDL portion from the shear force at point D. Hence 4 minus 2 into 4. So the 2 into 4 is the value of UDL and we will convert this value into point loads so that we multiply the distance of the UDL. So 2 into 4 that is 8. So 4 minus 8 is equal to minus 4 kN which is the value of shear force at point E. So now comes to the next span which is EF. So first of all at point E the shear force value will be minus 4 kN. Again at point F the value of shear force will be minus 4 minus 8. So minus 8 due to the point loads acting on the point F. So minus 4 minus 8 which is equal to minus 12 kN. So at point F the value of shear force is minus 12 kN. Then at point B that means here the shear force at point F will be continued towards the point B because in between F and B, no loading condition is there. So that we can say the shear force at point F is equal to the shear force at point B. Hence, the shear force at point B is equal to minus 12 kN. So now, we have to draw the shear force diagram. 
so we will discuss this in the next class thank you